Hi everybody, Steve here. This is another video in the series on how to make generative art. In this video, we're going to be rotating things using translate and rotate. Let's start with a simple example. Now I want to make a rectangle, but instead of saying I want the rectangle at 200, 200, we're going to move the zero, zero into a different spot on the canvas. So zero, zero is at the top left right now, but we're going to tell the computer that we want zero, zero to be, say, in the middle of the canvas. Uh, and to do that, we first need to use something called push. And then we would use translate. And we're going to put something in there. And then we're going to use something called rotate. And then after that, then we're going to use pop. So the push and the pop go together. The pop negates the stuff that happened within the push and the pop. So we've translated to the middle of the canvas, but when you pop, it translates back to where it was before uh, to the zero, zero. So let's translate to 200 comma 200. Uh, and then let's do a uh, rect mode center. Let's uh, not do the rotate just yet. We're going to make a rectangle. Now I want that rectangle to be at 200, 200, but we've already translated to 200, 200. So now that spot is zero, zero. So the rectangle is gonna be located at zero, zero and a hundred. So let's just run that and see what that looks like. It's in the center of the canvas. So next, let's add the rotation. So the rotate, uh, if I rotate right now, that's going to be in radian, so we would have to use pi. And to save you from that right now, let's do angle mode degrees. So let's do 45 degrees, and there we go. Uh, and we could rotate whatever we want, 15 degrees, and we get that. If I made this uh, 100 comma 200, then I could rotate this 90 degrees, and you'd see this. Now let's say I want to rotate this randomly. So within rotate, I could do random 360, and we could do that, and we get all sorts of different rotations. But let's say I want this only at some 45 degree angles. So what I could do is say random, there are gonna be eight of them, I think. So we could do 45, but we're gonna to have to floor that and put another parentheses and then times 45. So if we get zero as a result of this, times 45 would be zero. If we get one, that'll be 45 degrees. If we get two, that'll be 90 degrees. All right, let's try that. 45, all right, so that works. If you wanted to do 90 degrees, you could put 90 here and then you would only put four here. So we have our example from the last video and I've duplicated it and we're going to now rotate that we know we're going to need to push. We're going to be translating. And we're translating to the middle of the canvas so that we can rotate from the middle of the canvas. So width times 0 0.5, height times 0 0.5. Then we're going to rotate something. Let's say we rotate by 90 degrees. Uh, I need to make sure that we're in angle mode degrees if we're going to do that angle mode degrees and then we know we're also going to need to pop so I'll add that to the end so if I draw that now you can't even see it there you go you see a little bit of it let me turn off the rotate so it was here now it's down here so it looks like this so if we're going to rotate and then we want to draw this thing so we can actually see it uh, we have two options the first option is we go through all of these numbers and change them. 
So negative width times 0 0.1 would become width times 0 0.6, and height times 0 0.5 would become 0. But we don't need to do that. Let's leave it the way it is, because we can translate back the way we came from. We just copy this, paste it here, and then we put a negative here and here. And let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees, and you get our curve. So now we will rotate this to get different 90 degree angles. So 90 times 4, random 4. And that should be it. There we go. But let me comment this out. What if we wanted to rotate 45 degrees? So we're going to see the edge right here. So if you want to rotate 45 degrees, you would have to rewrite some of these so that they go farther out. That way you won't see the edge. Here's my traveling circus piece that used that curve across the canvas. Here is a band going across the canvas at different angles. There's a curve here. Then let's look at cheery quilts. And you can see that this is a rotated version of this. Uh, you can see this right here is a rotated version of this. And here's my order of things. You can see that this triangle is the same as this triangle. They're just rotated differently. Now you remember those curved vertexes where I was talking about making a leaf? That here's your curved vertex leaf rotated 45 degrees. And there's another one. This here is also using rotation in a for loop. So I'll show you an example of that. So this time we'll start from scratch. I'm gonna get rid of the draw. So first let's translate to the middle of the canvas. I'll push translate width times 0 0.5, height times 0 0.5. We don't need to translate to the middle of the canvas all the time. I'm just doing that now so it looks nice. And at some point we're going to have to pop. So we'll put that here. And let's draw some lines that just go out. We're going to do a for loop. So let's do 4i equals 0. I, let's say i less than 360 and then i plus equals 20 and we do a curly brackets so we're going to do something in here uh, we're going to rotate what i really want to do is rotate by this 20 that i've got here let's make that a variable uh, we'll say step equals 20 and then we can increase by step and then we can rotate by step. Then let's draw a line. And the line is starting from 0, 0 because that's where we are in the center of the canvas. And we're going to draw that line out some distance. So let's say we're going width times 0 0.4. And then what's the height of the end of that line? That's just going to be 0. We're just drawing a straight line across the canvas. That's going to be our first line is just straight across. And then we're going to rotate, and then we're going to draw another straight line. And then we're going to rotate, draw another straight line. So let's look at that. OK. And I forgot again to do angle mode degrees. Angle mode degrees. There we go. That looks better. Uh, let's decrease our steps to 10 maybe. Very good. And let's make this random. So instead of width times 0 0.4, we'll do width times random uh, 0 0.3 comma 0 0.5 maybe. Let's try that. We can decrease this step to 5. Very nice. I said the height is just a straight line straight across, but what if we change the height of that line? So we moved it down or up a little bit. Let's just try changing this line. No, interesting. I thought that would have some kind of effect. What if we started this 
down farther. Would that have an effect? Ah, there we go. That's interesting. And what if we put this down to 100 as well? Ah, very nice. So this is something you could play with. Lots of fun things you could do with this. And then let's duplicate it. Now, remember our curve vertex? Let's see what we can do. We'll increase this to 30 or so. And we're going to get rid of this line. And instead, we're going to have our curve vertex. First, we're going to begin shape. And then we're going to have a curve vertex. Just like the line, we're starting at 0, 0. So we'll start the curve vertex at 0, 0. And we'll make that an anchor point as well. So we'll just copy this down. And then we need another curve vertex. Let's just draw a bunch of them. Then we can fill in. And we're going to have an end shape at the end. So the first point will start here. We're going to go out a certain length. And then we're going to go up a certain length. Right. So we're going to go negative height. So for our x, let's do width times 0.17, I think, for the height, we're going to go negative. So let's do negative height to 0.1. And then our next point is going to be at width times, and I want it to be a second thirds position, but divide by 2. Okay, 0 0.33. And then that one is also going to be, let's also make that height times 0 0.1. Last point is going to be all the way towards the right side. Uh, so that's going to be width times, if we all went all the way to the edge, that would be 0 0.5. But let's make it 0 0.45 maybe. And then the height is going to be back to 0. So then we're going to come back around. So we've, we've just done this. Now we've got to come back around this way. So we're going to do the opposite of this. Let's just copy this one down here. And we'll copy this one down to here. And we're going to finish at 0, 0. Let's copy that. So we got an anchor point. Uh, this one, instead of negative height, we're going to have positive height and positive height, and that should be it. Let's try that. Booyah! Looks nice. Okay. Uh, this was actually taller than I expected, so let's try 0 0.5, 0 0.05. And I should probably make this a variable, but let's just do that for now. Very good. And then... If we want, we could finish this with a circle in the center. Let's do that. So circle 0, comma 0, and we'll make it 30. Uh, see what that looks like. I don't think that's big enough. Yeah, that looks all right. So you could play with this. You could make these different variables and have these variables happen before you get to the for loop. So then you would get different sized flowers, different uh, petal widths, different petal heights. Uh, so that would be an interesting thing to work on. And of course you could color your flowers all sorts of different colors. And the thing you could do also is now that you know how to make a flower, you could place multiple flowers around the canvas. All you would have to do is translate to different spots. And you'd have to make your flower a lot smaller because right now the flower is taking up the entire canvas size. I don't have an art example of that, but here is an example by Rose Bell Dev Growing Garden. And you can see flowers here, different sized petals. So this flower algorithm is the same as this flower algorithm. And it looks like this algorithm is the same as this one and this one over here. And then they also have a leaf algorithm, which is also going to be using curve vertex. Oh yeah, I forgot about my morphing mandala. So this uses curve vertexes that are layered on top of each other with some alpha 
And if I run this, you'll see that the curved vertexes are changing shape. This is a little more complicated because it's saving the curved vertex positions as it animates. We're going to be wrapping up soon, but I want to mention that you can have push and pop inside of push and pop. So if I translated to here, and then I translated maybe up to here, then if I popped from here, it would go back to here. And then if I popped from here, it would go back to here. The other thing to note is in 3D mode, there's some more translate functions that only work in 3D. We'll get to those later. So your homework is to play with this some more, see what you can make. I just added some color to both of these because I need a nice thumbnail. In the next video, I want to take a break from coding and very briefly give you a bit of perspective on creating and on being a generative artist. If you like this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing, uh, comments, I love to read your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.